Hi, I'm Anthony Gosh, consultant spinal neurosurgeon and founder of the Spine MDT. This video is about cervical disc replacement and cervical uh, fusion. I'm going to discuss both procedures, what they involve, why we do them, what the indications are, um, the difference between the two, which one is superior, and show you what the evidence suggests. Well, both procedures are to treat either a trapped nerve or the spinal cord within the cervical spine. So here's a model of the neck part of the spine, the cervical spine. Um, it's made up of a stack of bones called vertebrae. And between each bone, um, you have these cushions called discs that separate them. And the vertebrae house and protect the spinal cord. This is the back of the spine, that yellow structure there that you can see just under these bony arches is the spinal cord, which transmits messages to and from your brain and your body. And at each level in your neck, between each bone, uh, one of these yellow structures, a nerve, leaves the spine and innovates a different muscle in the arm and supplies a different area of sensation over the skin. So both procedures are carried out under general anaesthetic through a very small incision at the front of the neck, usually just around here on my neck, buried inside a skin crease so that when it heals up, uh, it's nicely hidden. And then the dissection in this gutter here, just to the side of your windpipe, um, takes you down to the front of the spine where you access um, the disc that you want to attack. Here we have a side view. This is the front, this is the back. Once you've accessed the front of the spine, these are the vertebral bodies. And in between are the discs, the little cushions that allow a bit of shock absorption and movement. And in this case, this disc is herniated and is pressing the spinal cord. So in both procedures, you remove the whole of the disc. And in its place, you place in this breeze block here called a cage. So this is in the case of fusion. It's just a rigid breeze block. Often they have various pores inside them where you can put artificial bone or some of the patient's own bone. And the idea is it wedges between the two bones and over time, this bone here will kind of grow through it and fuse with this bone here, stabilizing the segment. Once the segment fuses, there is no longer any motion between this bone and this bone. Normally, there's just a few degrees of a little bit of motion at each segment, but the cumulative effect of all of the bones moving is what allows you to move um, your, your neck about. And this is what um, surgeons have debated over the years, you know, how bad is it that you lose motion in that segment? We've often debated, well, the other segments therefore have to make up the loss of motion in this segment, and then you can therefore accelerate disease at the adjacent segments, adjacent segment disease we call this, where you can start forming knuckles, bony knuckles called osteophytes or disc herniations that can cause the same problem. For over the years, various artificial discs um, have been made and this is one example so instead of that breeze block I described you've got these kind of two plates and this mechanism between allowing a little bit of rotation uh, flexion and side to side uh, flexion as well. For years we have debated um, which procedure is superior. Um, the two biggest studies um, that have looked at 10-year data now with disc replacement versus fusion have had some conflicting results. So this study carried out in the United States looks at just over 150 patients um, and found that doing a disc replacement had slightly superior results in terms of efficacy, radiological findings and preventing um, adjacent segment disease. However, a very similar trial carried out in Sweden with a similar number of patients found that um, disc replacement had a slightly higher rate of revision operation because of some patients having loosening of the actual implant and having to be reoperated on uh, compared to the uh, fusion surgery. And the rate of adjacent segment disease actually being the same in both subgroups of patients. In terms of alleviation of symptoms, both um, were the same. And that's a really interesting finding because this center in Sweden is actually recognized as a very high volume disc replacement center. So, you know, they've very honestly published their results here. So in my practice, uh, based on all of that, for a single level, if one disc is causing a problem, impingement of the nerves compressing the spinal cord, um, I tend to prefer the fusion because I think the loss of motion of that one segment as a, alone 
is negligible in your day-to-day -day life. And if the segment fuses, particularly in high-performing athletes, particularly contact sports, I think the segment fusing, joining together properly bone on bone, gives you a far uh, more robust spine in that area. However, in multiple segments where you're going to start losing more and more motion if you start fusing segments, um, what, what you can be done is a hybrid of the two, so you can fuse one segment and do a disc replacement um, of the other segment. Hope you found that helpful. If so, please click like or subscribe to the channel. It really helps patients living with back pain, neck pain or spine disease find information that I try and post on this channel every week. Also, please head over to spinemdt.com for any further information.